Today will be a bit personal for me. You guys know I have a passion uh, for cancel culture or fighting against cancel culture. Uh, so today's topic and interview will be personal because we're going to go deep on cancel culture and we're going to do it with someone I respect and consider a friend and someone who I think uh, was damaged uh, seriously by cancel culture and by the unfairness of cancel culture, Papa John Schneider, the great pizza man, the great spokesman mm -hmm. for Papa John's Pizza, brand long associated with the National Football League, but more important than any of that, he's a Ball State grad <laughs> like myself, and he's a great man who the left and cancel culture tried to destroy. He's going to be our guest on this special edition of Fearless. Let's get into it. Welcome, welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I'm Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. We have an awesome show uh, planned for you today. Uh, my dear friend, fellow Ball State alum, Papa John Snyder will be joining us for at least the next hour, maybe the next two, maybe the next three days. We will see. <laughs> we have a lot, a lot to talk about. Uh, this episode is brought to you by our good friends at Good Ranchers. Use my promo code FEARLESS at GoodRanchers.com. And with your subscription, you can claim free American Wagyu burgers for a year. That's a $400 value and support veterans this Memorial Day season. Uh, thank you, Good Ranchers, for supporting us and supporting me so that we can do shows like today. Uh, Papa John Snyder, founder of Papa John's Pizza. Uh, welcome to Nashville and welcome to Fearless. Thank you, Jason. Proud to be here. Uh, so just to give the audience a little background, in 2018, uh, Papa John is leading Papa John's Pizza. He gets caught up in the kind of story <laughs> that is all too common over the past 10 years, uh, people taking comments out of context and using those out of text comments and a media narrative to paint someone as racist, as evil, in an attempt to, you know, we sit back from afar and we're like, hey, what's the agenda here? I think now, six years on the other side, the agenda was clear as it related to Papa John. People wanted to unseat him from his pizza throne and they wanted to take control of his business. They smeared this man unfairly, in my view. Uh, later this month, Papa John has a uh, the beginning of a lawsuit. Uh, it's going to start coming to a crescendo with the laundry service, the, the marketing PR firm that he had hired uh, to represent his interest, and they clearly represented the interest of uh, someone else. I, I just want to give you that bit of background because this it's taken six years. This redemption story has taken six years, and I think this summer. Papa John's going to be fully redeemed. I'm not sure if Papa John's pizza is ever going to be fully <laughs> redeemed. But uh, Papa John, uh, how are you doing? What's life just in general been like the last six years since you allegedly or the attempt to cancel you? It's been, um, you know, it's been good. It's been challenging at times. Um, you know, I think adversity is a good thing if you use it properly. Um, it kind of strips away the non-essentials. Um, when all this went down, because life to me is a giant experiment. You know, how do you learn? How do you grow? How do you get better? Because uh, life's not fair. It, it just is not. And, you know, no matter what level you're playing at, uh, you're going to have ups and downs. Things that are not fair or appropriate or, um, you know, somebody betrays you. Um, you know, it, it's just going to happen. And it, it's how you handle that. Um, that I think dictates, you know, your life and your happiness. And you, you can make a decision. Do you want to mope, which we'll talk about? Um, do you want to play the victim? Um, or do you want to, you know, be happy and high energy and love people and love life and, you know, make the world a better place and make yourself a better person? So, you, you know, you make that decision probably every single day throughout the day. And so, 
this was a setback. Um, <clears throat> uh, it had, and we'll get into this, how the, the kind of ebbed and flowed and then you know, you have that point where you, you kind of hit rock bottom where people that you love kind of really did this to me. And that was kind of a tough part. Um, but when it went down, um, like you, I'm a little naive. Um, I think everybody uh, underestimates how smart the elite left is. They're smart. They know what they're doing. They, they know how to hurt you. They know how to hurt me. And you got to know that. But um, I'm one of those, if you have the facts, the science, the analytics, you know, people will, they'll understand it. And uh, that's not exactly the case. You know, you can have the facts, you can have the truth, but if you don't have the narrative, um, you're, you're not. And so when I look back on what happened uh, as um, a learning experience and how does it make John better, um, several things pop up. Uh, cancel culture, you have to have the right PR team around you. In 2018, of Papa John's and Papa John's board, which I was pretty adamant about, and to the point where I almost begged him, I said, "You're gonna have to give me some PR support." Uh, remember the comments um, at the um, uh, beginning of November of 17, where um, Goodell needs to get his act together. L let me pause for one minute and just give the audience that context you're about to unpack, because want your uh, you can give us a more insider's look, but just for the audience, you guys remember me being very critical of Colin Kaepernick and all the kneeling stuff that was going on in the National Football League. Papa John and Papa John's Pizza being partnered with the NFL, I'm bothered by it, but it's actually hurting his business. He is in partnership with the NFL and all of the kneeling was hurting the NFL ratings, and because Papa John and Peyton Manning and the commercials that everyone remembers, a big part of their business was attached to the NFL. And I believe it was in an earnings call or a meeting with the shareholders. You kind of shared your frustration about, hey, the NFL has shown bad leadership here. They didn't handle this controversy well. And so he just made general comments about NFL leadership that I think was appropriate. I think everybody has to agree the NFL didn't handle that well. They took a ratings dip. It hurts Papa John's pizza's sales. He's expressing natural frustration about what the NFL is doing. Somehow this gets twisted into some sort of racial comment. Any kind of criticism of the NFL and how they handled the kneeling, and then you hire a PR team to help you get through that and that's when really all hell broke loose. It's a little, I look at it a little bit differently. Yeah, the NFL, uh, Goodell especially, did not handle the situation right. Yeah, the controversy was hurting our sales um, and hurting the small business owner, our franchisees. Um, I didn't take a position. Uh, the comment was, let's make sure this gets resolved to the owner's and player's satisfaction. The point I was making is that they turned that into, I was against kneeling and, and manufactured and mischaracterized and misconstrued everything I said. That should have been, uh, God always gives you a couple of wisps of smoke before you, you know, and that should have been the first wisp of smoke to watch my board of directors and my senior management team, because I was retiring at the time, I was I'd stepped down to CEO and watch the PR firm, just total uh, incompetence and um, PR malpractice. Um, and that should have been the first uh, wisp of smoke to you better get this area of your life uh, reconciled and fixed uh, because this is going to come back up again. And so pre um, uh, meetings that came after that with the board of directors, I was very adamant that, listen, this is going to happen again. I'm going to get attacked again. And if we don't have that PR um, front covered, then the company and me are going to take, uh, you know, pretty good uh, loss, a pretty good hit, and and that that went fell on deaf ears, and so it happened again, another false merit narrative, which is even far worse than the first, and that was probably the thing that um, was the, the demise of my leadership at Papa John's. And so the second example you're talking about, when you're in a private conversation with the PR team at Laundry Services and you're talking about strategies on how to handle this current controversy, you say, like, hey, I can't believe I'm catching all this heat 
yeah. Colonel Sanders use the N word. And, you know, I haven't done that. I don't even believe in using that word. And then that is what set off the tsunami that led to your ouster. Um, sort of. That was a piece of it. Um, the, you want the good news and the, and the bad news? <laughs> the bad news is they taped it, you know, without telling me. The good news for me is they taped it. You know, I mean, I, I know what I said and I have what I said, but, you know, there's 430 people have lost, their families have lost their job in Louisville. These franchisees, I mean, the, the company's at a, a six-year low and seven-year low in stock price. I mean, this board... That just was announced yesterday, or didn't yeah. they just have a meeting yesterday, or...? Yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's fascinating that <laughs> I've been telling you for seven years that their, their behavior, uh, lack of ethics, uh, lack of principles, lack of loving people, lack of mutual respect, lack of win-win, lack of quality, lack of service, lack of cleanliness. I've been telling you for six years that, hey, the sooner or later, if you don't tend to the shop and run the business with, uh, with integrity and good customer experience, it's going to catch up. A day before I come on your show, uh, it, it finally has crashed. I mean, they've been uh, rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic now for six years, and the Titanic is finally sinking. They've had a 30% drop in stock price, maybe since January 1? 30%, but that's 30% this year. That's on top of probably 35 last year and 40 the year before. So the stock's gone from 142 down to 52. So if you were to put 140 bucks in Papa John's, you pretty well lost, you know, 70, 80% of your money. And that just being honest about conversations John and I have had over the years, you've been saying all along, like, hey, this isn't going to last. And yes, they have a COVID rise. When COVID and everybody's sitting at home and is forced to order pizza, yeah. it looks great. But you've been saying reality's coming and reality's here. Yeah. Um, they, um, what's the saying is that you, you're moving along, you're awake and you're dealing with reality and then you go to sleep, but you think you're awake. You wake up to the nightmare, but you go back to sleep. Then you wake up to the nightmare, go back to sleep. But sooner or later, you gotta wake up to the nightmare and deal with reality. And I think they're, I think their come to Jesus moment is right now. And I think that, um, and that, you know, I really didn't want to be right, but you got to see, I built the machine. You know, when you start on the broom closet and you build it up to 5,000 stores, you know the inner workings, how the cogs work and how everything works together. And back to my, I really like to learn. And what I've learned watching, this will be the third or fourth time that I've walked away and the thing's falling apart. And this time around, uh, uh, the learnings are, yep, you got to do the product and service. You got to measure for the product and service. You got to build the company on principles, morals, and ethics. You have to do that. I mean, it, it's just imperative um, that you have a culture of win win and that people are priority one of kindness and thoughtfulness and love and positive energy. You have to have that in a culture. And we did. We were the best place to work five years in a row. And I've learned things since then that would even make a better culture. But the thing that I learned this time around is, Franchisees don't understand that the corporate, the mothership has to be healthy and the mothership has to understand that the franchisees have to be healthy. We just took that for granted that both sides knew it had to be a win-win. And so the last five years, corporate doesn't really care about franchisees, especially the small operator, which is the bread and butter of the entire enterprise. If that small operator, that one and two or three store operator is making money, you know your 10 store operator is making money. And then you know your 100 store operator is making money. But if that one and two and three store operator is not making money, then you know you got a problem with your franchise system being healthy. Franchisees need to understand the mothership needs to do well. And right now the balance sheet and the cash flow and just the asset of the company are not in a good shape, not a good place for the company. So we got to get this back to the franchisees win and the motherships win, and most importantly, the employees win. Because if the employees win um, and you take care of the product, the customer wins. But the employees got to come first. So I'm in the media, and, and when this all went down, in 2018, I was appalled. Like, hey, I've heard this story. I heard 
what went on in these meetings, why are we in the media selling the notion that you saying, hey, Colonel Sanders, again, KFC, mm -hmm. your business is the pizza of basically of Colonel Sanders or KFC or the, the the way Colonel Sanders built himself into the brand, you built yourself into the brand, and it seems like a natural, normal analogy to make, but I watched the media paint you as this racist person just kind of haphazardly off of a leaked uh, piece of information, a private conversation. What What's that like to be smeared in such a Rep malicious way. Um, again, we're going to come back to let's let's do the two in, two inch violin and a pity party for John. I'm a hard guy to feel sorry for, so you got to just get over that, and I got to get over that real quick. So let's just um, I look at what I, what did I learn? Because when this started out, and I heard about this, I, I thought this is this is crazy. This is kind of funny. You know, you're going to paint me as a racist. You know, there's no way. There's no history of it. Uh, there's no examples of it. And no way. And um, the left is smart, and they can take one sound bite. Remember, there was four tapes, and they misconstrued and mischaracterized. What I said was actually anti-racist. So, yeah, was it wrong? Um, was it horrific? Uh, was it pretty uh, inhumane thing to do to somebody that treats everybody with kindness and love and respect and loves humanity? I love humanity. Um, the and I love humans. You know, Einstein said I love humanity, but I don't like humans. I'm not too sure about humanity. I actually like humans. Um, but okay, what did John do wrong? And the answer is I didn't have the right um, executive team in place. I didn't have the right board in place. The board was weak. They panicked. They took the easy way out. Uh, they never did a proper investigation. And I didn't have the right PR team. And then that's what I want to leave your audience with um, a couple of things I want to get done today. One is <clears throat> this was a brutal, you know, five or six years. Um, and you got to pick yourself up by the bootstraps and move on. And we, uh, and yeah, you know, the wealth helps, but we're all human beings. We all have ups and downs. We're all emotional. We all have a heart. We all have a soul. We all have family, all have friends. Um, I just hope that I can just give one nugget to where somebody's out there that, you know, uh, the folks that wake up and make our country great. Those are my heroes. And they can just take one nugget of, well, Papa John's got his teeth kicked in and this is how you handle it. Uh, that would be that would be a total win for me uh, today. But uh, on the woke thing, <clears throat> um, you got to have the right people. If Mark Serrano and Proactive and his team would have been around me, this would have never happened because it was untrue. And my board of directors and my executive team and my PR team said, it'll blow over. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal to blow over. And I'm going, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm Papa John. And once they paint me in that light, um, then I'm, you know, I'm dead. And they just not, not they didn't take any action. Time went on. And, um, you know, a lot of damage was caused to the employees. They lost their jobs. The brands got hurt significantly because it doesn't have the depth it had. And the franchisees uh, have lost a lot of value in their franchises because of um, corporate with bad leadership and letting this go on. As Mother Day approaches, we're honoring mothers by launching the Blaze Baby Shower in support of the Ministry of Preborn. Preborn's network of clinics exists exclusively to offer love, life, and support to pregnant women who are feeling scared and alone and who are being pressured to make the ultimate choice. One that will not only sacrifice the life of their baby, but will also take a piece of their heart. When a distressed mother comes to preborn, she's welcome with open arms and is offered a free ultrasound to see and hear the precious life inside her. And the majority of time, once that happens, she will choose life for her baby. This Mother's Day, you can help bring life to both a mother in need and an at-risk baby. One ultrasound is only $28. Five ultrasounds are 140. Every penny goes towards loving mothers and babies as well. And when you become a monthly sponsor, you will receive pictures and stories of lives you help save. To get involved, simply dial pound 250 and say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, keyword baby. Or visit preborn.com slash fearless. That's preborn.com slash fearless.
So when you're in a fight like you've been in since 2018, it seems like all those different things would be affected. You're pouring a lot of energy into a fight that I think is justified. Sure. That that goes back to I'm gonna go back to that question. You want your name to be clean and good and not a burden for your kids or grandkids. Every man takes pride, or pride is a word I try not to use, but every man <laughs> values his name. And and yours has been unfairly damaged. And I'm I'm trying to understand how does that impact you on all those different levels you're talking about. It, it, and again, it's not painting you as a victim. And I know you've made a lot of money and no one wants to feel sorry for you. But just as honest men, we all understand. Like when I say Whitlock, I want people to think like, oh, that's one of the most honest, transparent, good people I know. And I, the media has tried to damage my name and paint me as, oh, he hates black people or, oh, he's a sellout. It does bother me. And, and, and I'm taking similar steps as you to try to repair that. And, and a lot of that just goes, well, I'm just going to lean more into God and, and wear my faith more publicly. Uh, and, and, because, and then part of it is just like, maybe I take a little pleasure in being persecuted because it, <laughs> Jesus was persecuted. Yeah. And it's a sign that I stand on truth that I'm persecuted. So what's the question? <laughs> how, how do you feel about the damage that's been done to your name? And, and how important is that to clean that up? Um, I still think I'm the luckiest guy that ever walked the planet. The public didn't buy it. They knew it was fishy. They're like, hey, something done add up here. Usually, I hate to say it this, sometimes the masses are asses. This guy, for some reason, they went, you know, this guy got screwed over. That was, and two is, I got the tape. I got all four tapes. So, I mean, it's, I've got the smoking gun. So everybody knows it's nonsense. Now, they, the weak, as you know, the, I love conservative values and I love our conservative leadership. And Trump's, he's a strong personality. He's, I'm not, he, he's, he, he is not who I'm talking about, but um, they're, they do, they're, the elite that pretends like they're put together, um, they're, you know, big and mighty and strong, they're put together like paper dolls. They don't, you know, the, the, I always look at the man or the woman behind it, you know, like my, my ex-wife, she's an extraordinary woman. You're an extraordinary man. Like Tony Robbins, dear friend. I mean, uh, I got to tell you a Tony Robbins story. We had him at the office and this was back when Papa, Papa John's was the, the best place to work in the country for five straight years. We're winning every quality world, world in the world. We have 200 million in EBITDA. We're making 160 million in pre-tax profit. I mean, we're on the world. And Tony Robbins comes up and he goes, wow, man, this place. I mean, it's like humming. I mean, it's collaborative. It's the uh, employees are making $34 million a year in bonuses. I mean, the place is on fire. This is a cool, this is a cool situation. I mean, and he says, I want to meet your CEO who was Steve Ritchie. And Tony's about 6'8", 270, carved out of marble. I mean, he's built like I am. Not like me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, yeah. Um, in fact, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he walks in Richie's office, and I let him spend not two, three minutes together. And so we keep on when the turn, because I, and he pins me against the wall. Now, he and I are pretty good friends, but not as good friends then as we are today. He says, you better be careful. So, what do you mean? He goes, that guy is going to hurt you. I said, I heard him at five bucks an hour, six bucks an hour. He's making six million dollars this year. He's, you know, he's been with me 22 years. John, that guy's going to do damage to you. He's going to hurt you in a big way. One minute, Tony Robbins. And so we get back to, okay, work on John. <clears throat> and, you know, he had the awareness. See, I, I think spirituality God is more consciousness you know, a higher vibration of love and joy and peace, but with that comes a higher level of information, a higher level of awareness. Robbins had that. At the time, I didn't have that. So there's a barometer that the spirituality needed to have uh, work on it. Um, but anyway, if I'm in a foxhole, 
with um, uh, two folks. I want Tony Robbins on my left and Joe Dispenza on my right because I'm going to live. All Joe Dispenza does is care about helping other people. He didn't care about being Joe Dispenza. He didn't care about the money. He's, you know, same thing with Robbins. And so when I look at like what you've done, you know, my, I just get excited because I know what kind of human being you are. And the same thing with, you know, now the opposite goes true with people are not so good. I mean, in this case, the two people on the inside of Papa John's that did me wrong were the CEO, Steve Ritchie. Uh, and how do we know that? We know that because Nadine Basul, the largest franchisee, um, asked Steve, goes, why would you let do this to John? Why would you do this to him? And Steve Ritchie said, because he was going to fire me. So we know Ritchie was in on it. He was uh, acting. So you, the CEO of Papa John's. Who was, you hired and started out and had a long two decade relationship with, yeah. you think he's one of the main players that orchestrated. Well, he self admitted he he was he he's admitted he was part of it because he was he was afraid he was going to get fired, and then Mark Shapiro got the forty million dollar ad agency with Endeavor, um, and he knew if I was on the board I wasn't going to let him have that business because it's a conflict of interest. But these, these were actively complicit, but laundry service is the one that sh pulled the trigger. They're the ones that shot, you know, shot me. And so, um, and the rest of the board of directors, they're just weak and they're kind of not real sharp. They're, you know, they're like, they just kind of went along with it because it was easy. Um, but yeah, we had two folks on the inside, but anyway, back, back. No, here. no, no, this is interesting. I want to, I want the audience to understand this. Steve Ritchie, your CEO, mm -hmm. who thought he was going to get fired. Hey, let me help ease John up out of here so I can survive. And and th that's because a lot of people will hear that and go, well, hold on, it's Papa John's company. He founded it. But founders, a lot of times, they can't control a board. They can't control the people. They, and so this happens. Well, and then you, you mentioned Mark Shapiro. Mm -hmm. And Mark Shapiro, someone I think is someone I'm quite familiar with. He used to run ESPN. Correct. And yeah, I used to work for Mario. Okay, I just want to make sure. And so he's with Endeavor, which is an agency at that time that, that was part of the Papa John's right. or wanted businesses with Papa John. Yeah, the account for Papa John's was 40 million. And if uh, Shapiro got the 40 million, he got a $10 million sign on bonus and package. So Richie, trying to save his job. Shapiro just wanted the, the, the $10 million endeavor package. Um, but that was the motive for them uh, co-conspiring with Jason Stein with laundry service to, to take me and set me up and to oust me of the company. And but, so, but, but remember, you got Brutus and Caesar. You got Peter and Christ. I mean, it's, this, this betrayal by your right-hand man is just something that's historic. It runs through thousands of years of history, no? It, it absolutely does. <laughs> but, I, I want people to understand because they'll hear laundry services and go, is is this some kind of cleaning service yeah, for clothes yeah. or whatever? It's it's a PR company, correct? It's an ad agency that specialized in digital me media that did our PR on the uh, as part of their program. Burgers are the most popular food in America. You've probably eaten one in the past week, and you're definitely craving one right now. <laughs> That's why you should make this summer one to remember by subscribing to Good Ranchers and getting free Wagyu burgers for a year. If you haven't had their American Wagyu burgers, then you haven't had one of the best burgers ever. My mouth is watering just thinking about it. Here's three steps to get your year free of burgers. One, simply go to GoodRanchers.com and subscribe to any of their custom curated boxes filled with 100% American beef, chicken, pork, or wild-caught seafood. Step two, use my promo code FEARLESS at checkout to claim your free American Wagyu burgers for a year, plus a free bacon butter gift that is perfect bacon topping for any burger. All in all, that's a $400 value with my promo code FEARLESS. Step three, get free shipping on all your orders and have the summer to remember. If you needed any other reason to support Good Ranchers, they're not only amazing partners of my show, but they support Paralyzed Veterans of America too. Every order saves American farms and supports American veterans. Change the way you buy meat today at GoodRanchers.com with my promo code FEARLESS to claim your free burgers for a year. Get 100% American meat delivered and support veterans this Memorial Day season. 
Good ranchers. American meat delivered. And so I want to play a clip. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is one of the laundry service people that was on the call, the infamous call that mm -hmm. got you. And, and I think they're talking about putting you out to pasture yeah, yeah. in this clip. And again, this is where Papa John's talking about all this stuff is on tape. You can hear it for yourself and a jury or judges are hearing this. Let's play that clip for the audience. I hope he gets sent out to pasture on this shit. I really, really just said a lot about him. They were very revealing, so. Yeah, I mean, I already, that's already all been revealed to me. That's yeah. why I just want him to go out and talk. Yeah. Because um, he can't take even the most, like, simple, like, just acknowledge the fact, like, I mean, find some empathy for the people and why they're, do, why they're doing this protest. Like, he wouldn't even pick up on that. Yeah. He's really not. They do know when the eight years well, the, the, the players their don't salaries, care. Yeah. They're going to still protest. That part was that, more important. That was super he's racist. Was and then he's the reason, he has no problem saying talking about that black people were dragged behind the car using the N word just now, but he can't just say that. Did he actually say N word? Yes, 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 yes. Now, I missed that as well. He literally just said he said Colonel Sanders said that. He said he called them N word and he he's fine. But all I did was say the Baco. And, and he has no problem saying that, but he can't say that he said anything. Colin, Colin Kaepernick, is there only one, there's only one reason he's not playing right now. Yeah. yeah. It's not because he sucks. Before I was like, yeah, it's money driven. Now I'm like, no, I think he's actually very much in fact racist from a lot of the answers that he gave. It's like a lack of self-awareness and a lack of curiosity and a lack of trying to like change his view or attack it in his life. Because if you just want to look at this box, like that is the ingredient to racism. Okay, so it's devil's advocate. Um, despite the plan, plan's the plan. No one, no one has said to him, dude, are you really not getting it? You are out of touch. Everyone, including us, are pandering a little bit to the man. No one is saying, for, you are actually out of touch. You cannot say these things. I get your empathy note about that you find it horrible. He that, knows. He knows. Yeah. I don't give a okay. Yeah. Then, shit. then he doesn't give a shit. Okay. Like, like the way he said, yeah, I know you guys. I can't say that. I know. Like he, yeah. he, knows. he knows. He knows everything. So, he knows. So, and, and devil's advocate. <laughs> yeah, no, like, you're right. It's a fair point, but he knows. Yeah. He, I just want him to go and speak the truth. And I want to write down the bullet points and then let him go. And, he just has to make sure it's an hour-long conversation yep. so that he says shit like he said here. Uh, he's going to come out. He can't control it. Yeah. I want the person interviewing him to get his kids out, even though he knows to not say those specific answers. Yeah. I want that shit to come out, too. Yeah. Like, I want it to come out now. Because even now, he starts firing. Yeah, like, I want whatever we, we recorded to be, like, the actual interview. I already point. spoke to Don Orwell, who said he, he gets it. He's, he said he'll only do it if he can ask all the hard questions and really talk about all the hard issues. And he'll do it for an hour on Twitter Live. Mm -hmm. Is it a so we just have to make sure he does that? He can't do five minute soundbite. Yeah. Cool. But that, 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 Bill Simmons will do it too. I'll, I'll help him with that. Is it the uh, is the a Twitter questionnaire or is it is live being streamed? Live on Twitter for an hour. Streamed or streamed, or streamed? on video. Darren asks questions. Yeah. He answers and then he questions from Twitter. Yeah. Cool. And I told Darren by the end of it, it needs to be viral. He said no problem. <laughs> <laughs> What I did do, though, is I put in his answers into the different questions yeah. when they weren't there, so we have it in our and I see the link, so that the... the Those are people you were paying? What was interesting, the, they were setting me up by taping the call, and they, um, and I've, I've been forever since I heard this, um, Darren Ravel was the first person that jumped on the NFL um, comments back in uh, November. And they'd already premeditated with a guy. Here's a sports writer that all of a sudden asking questions on an earn, uh, earnings call. We never could put that together. In fact, I didn't until he just told me. Aaron Ravel's a plant. He's a plant, but they'd already, <laughs> they were trying to get me to say the, the same things in this interview, a training session with him. And that was, that was, so we have a setup within a setup, which is kind of interesting. Those were your enemies. That, that sounds like a strategy session to destroy you. 
and you're paying them. They're supposed to be working on your behalf. What, do, do, were you in the same room with these people? Well, they kept, as I said, there was four tapes. Um, when they were doing all the comments, hey, we just need to get him to say this or yeah. there, we just need to set him up on this way uh, or that way, um, they were muting. So we couldn't hear him on the other side. But as you heard uh, Poulter, who was a whistleblower, who taped the whole conversation, if we didn't have that tape, it'd be sitting here, I said, me said, she said, kind of deal. This, we have the tape, so we know exactly what was going on. But they would mute the part where they'd say, we want to send him out to pasture, I hope he gets effed, or whatever else. That's That was what was going on with that. Anybody listening to that? Those people were plotting against you. Correct. And you're paying them to plot for you. They're plotting against Do Have you deposed these people? Are, are, are these black people, white people? What it, it sounded most I'm like these people sounded clueless. Um, this agency, I think, was representative of the far left mindset. Yes, and you know, I probably have more of a conservative mindset, so um, I think there's just a difference in ideology. But if you if you if you really feel that badly about the founder and the brand and the face of the brand, you probably shouldn't take the account. I would, I would. Yes. Yeah. And so everybody, Papa John, everybody knows that like, Hey, Papa John leans right. How did y'all even get in bed with these leftists? Shapiro and Richie. Richie hired, um, laundry service and Shapiro uh, gave him his blessing. And that's how they ramrodded that through the board. Same, same two players. Say what I say. Every time you turn over a stone with this, you turn over a hundred. I mean, because there's a hundred, it just looks bad. I mean, just none of it really looks good on what happened. But again, um, it did. It happened, and it's it's um, you know you you learn. How did you meet Steve Ritchie? I'm sorry. I'm, he start, I'm he, he start, totally blown away. This is the, I'm listening to this in real time, John. I didn't listen to this earlier. This is incredible to me. This is a criminal. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg of you saw the, the emails and the texts. It's, it's clear they set me up. So that, that is undeniable, undisputable. And we'll talk about what they're doing to get around the fact that they did set me up. And they have the circumstantial evidence everywhere. And then they have the smoking gun with the four tapes that it were doctored. So that's good. Richie was hired as a driver. A driver? Six bucks an hour. Oh, a delivery driver. Yeah, yeah. And so in Louisville, in Louisville, and, and so you had you met him just as a driver, or you were that hands-on that you would meet drivers, or um, no, Richie, Richie's path was he moved up to where. Well, first of all, Richie had his own franchise, his own pizza restaurant, and it oh, went Papa back, John's. No, no, he had his own independent. He was trying to plagiarize everything we did. And um, you know he didn't do too well with it, so he shut his uh, pizza uh, pizzeria down and came to work for Papa John's at six bucks an hour. And then he was a man. How old is he at that time, or just around? That doesn't be okay. It. Let's run the math here real quick. Richie's forty-five. Um, so let's take um, thirty minus today. I'd say, Rich, this was 30 years ago. Gotcha. So what's that, 2000 and, or 1993? 94 would be. 94. Yeah. I'd say he came on in probably 90, I think he came on in 90, I mean, we weren't, we were, in 93, we had 230 stores and he was on board before then. So it probably was 1989 or 90. Yeah. I mean, the guy started out at the so bottom. He, he can't, you, at one point you said he's 45. He can't be 45 No, no. Now. I was taking the, probably the 10 years since I left Papa John's. So gotcha. Probably closer to 53 or 54 today. And so when did you all become friends or? Richie, Richie's a really talented guy. Um, and you just got to have him in the right role. But I think he moved up through the system. And then he went and bought a franchise with a guy named Tim O'Hearn. And they made a good team because O'Hearn's kind of the, he's the leader, kind of the visionary, the detail guy, and Richie's uh, the, kind of the people side of things and the executor. So I think Richie's um, a very good employee 
as long as he has, um, you know, somebody over above him that has the visionary skills, the organization skills, and, um, you know, the, the discipline to get things done. But Richie's got a lot of talent. Otherwise, he wouldn't have moved up to be CEO. Do you remember at what time you all, in order to move up with CEO, you probably had your blessing. So at some point, you guys had to become friendly or start yeah. working with each other closely where you felt comfortable, knew him. Well, remember, the when you're successful as a leader, it's the team. And when you're unsuccessful as a leader, you're the problem. I mean, we remember we took in 2009, the stock was 680 a share. In 2016, the stock was eight dollars and eighty cents. Six eighty a share, six dollars and eighty cents. And uh, 2016, the stock's eighty five, eighty eight bucks. So we had an incredible team. Which you know that was Tony Thompson, Steve Ritchie, um, Tim O'Hearn, Shane uh, uh, Hutchinson was pretty pretty good. Uh, Sean Muldoon was fantastic. Um, we just um, we just had an unbelievable team that was, I mean, if you look at each one individually, including me, nothing special, but together the chemistry was, and we, we built 5,000 stores, uh, Jason. We built 5,000 stores. So Richie was, was, a, was a part of that. Um, and he, he moved up from franchisee to, you know, uh, senior director of operations, the VP of operations to COO. And eventually he was promoted in, you know, really in 16. I started stepping down and officially in, and promoted in 17. Why did you want to remove him as CEO or why did he reach the conclusion that you wanted to remove him? Um, the, I, I told the board in 15, 16, I said, listen, you know, the thing was, uh, it was on its back and glad to come in and do it. And we were having a lot of success, but I didn't want to, you know, run the thing day to day because when you're running 5,000 stores and you've got 120,000 employees and you're building, um, you know, a store a day, you know, 250 to 400 stores a year openings, you, you get worn out. And so we were trying to have a succession plan in place uh, 13, 14, and 15 for Richie to transfer into 16 because I wanted to step down. Um, and so I stepped down uh, informally in 16. It was run pretty good, but it was slipping a little bit. Not like it is today, but slipping in my eyes. That's just my, you know my opinion on how the thing should be run. And then in 17, um, it was slipping a lot. He brought in laundry service. He brought in a guy named... Uh, Brandon Roden, who was not not a CMO, he just wasn't qualified, uh, and he just didn't have the ability. He we changed the culture, that bro culture with Steve Ritchie and uh, OST. That was them. I didn't know anything about the OST and the bro culture. So Ritchie started doing things in '17. I stepped down, and by January of '18, it was pretty evident that we had made a bad choice in Steve Ritchie. And you go, well, John, that's just your opinion. Maybe there's animosity. Remember, I didn't fire Steve Ritchie. Jeff Smith, Olivia Curtley, and the board of directors fired Steve Ritchie after I left. So they realized what I realized a little later on in 18, early 19. But it wasn't, again, um, you got to get the right people on the bus and you got to get them in the right seat. And there was nothing wrong with Ritchie. I just think he's more of a um, VP operations or chief executive of franchise sales. I think that's more suited to his skill level. He's just not a CEO. Gotcha. So I now understand the Steve Ritchie and I understand Mark Shapiro and Endeavor and I understand like, oh, okay. So uh, we got the Donald Trump of pizza and we're gonna put him in bed with Nancy Pelosi and Maxine Waters mm -hmm. of a PR firm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now, you, that's, now I, got, I never looked at it that yeah. way, but that's pretty now good. I got it. <laughs> now, now, now I understand it. The other potential enemies that, that I see uh, are people in the NFL, perhaps, because you were pretty tight with Dan Snyder and Jerry Jones, and I think they had a vision of how they wanted the NFL to move that 
a lot of people in the NFL, Roger Goodell and some of these other leftist owners, they want to go a different direction. Am I? Yeah, I, I think I can help you out with this on a macro basis because um, the reason the elite left hate Papa John's is because Papa John's defied everything about their ideology. Entitlement. You can't make it without government help. Uh, faith. Uh, respect for a higher power, uh, principles, values, win-win. The people at the bottom are more important than the people at the top. Our way of doing business debunks the elite left's ideology completely. So that, I'm a Mark man, you know. Uh, I've got a bullseye on my back right off the bat. Now, the NFL, <clears throat> that's interesting because remember, <laughs> But we were the number one brand with Peyton and Jerry and the number one brand in the NFL. Here's how, how we were 60 on the ratings. I think um, Verizon was 40 and then maybe Budweiser was 20 and all the other sponsors for the NFL were less than six or seven. So Papa John's is basically with Peyton, 60%, 40, I mean, we're, we're now Goodell, um, he's got a guy around him named Joe Lockhart. It, yeah. Lockhart's in with Obama and Clinton. Yes. So you've got the, uh, the controversy going on with kneeling. You've got their ratings are down 20. 40% of our, our spend is with the NFL. So the franchisees are getting hurt at Papa John's. And so uh, Lockhart is in Goodell's ear. <laughs> and he's saying, you know, you, you got to bend, you got to do this. And, and, you know, that was, I don't think what they did was in the players' best interest because the players are making 10, 20, 30 million dollars a year, pick your number, playing football. And you got Lockhart telling Goodell, by the way, we need to do something that's going to hurt the football brand, the masculinity and, and the, you know, the things that made the NFL uh, great. So um, we now have the founder of Papa John's calling out Goodell saying, Listen, you're a coward. You know, this is the players and the owners have to be satisfied. Get those two together and get this resolved. And so I'm wailing on Goodell being the top sponsor, and he's got Lockhart. And by the way, it was interesting Goodell and Casey Washman, the owner of laundry service, are best friends. So now I got an ad agency who's best friends with Goodell, who I'm hammering on because the guy's not doing his job, who's listening to Lockhart. So it's all political, and it's coming from a high place. It's fast. The whole thing's fascinating. It's very fascinating. I think people have never had an opportunity to understand <laughs> it on that level. And and I just want to buttress what Papa's saying is like Casey Wasserman, the Wasserman Media Group or whatever, very very powerful, mm -hmm. very very best friends with Roger Goodell. Papa John, and this whole, if you go back to 2016, 17, this whole kneeling thing was overshadowing everything in sports. And Papa John was saying, hey, this is bad leadership, which I'm just sorry. I, I, that's, that's like saying, hey, Jason Whitlock is good looking. Everybody knows that. It's a fact. <laughs> so it's, it's, not, it's not even a controversial statement. Uh, and so did you know when you were making these criticisms of Roger Goodell, you were stirring the pot and maybe stirring up a hornet's nest. Well, um, yes and no. <clears throat> Before the earnings call, Dan Snyder and Jerry Jones wanted to fire Roger Goodell. And they called me personally, I was out in Utah. <clears throat> and they, um, they said, we want you to slam him and mention him by name and go after him. And I go, no, 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 this clown doesn't work for me. You know, he works for you guys. I said, I'm gonna point out the fact that this matter's gotta get resolved and the player's gotta be happy and the owner's gotta be happy, but I'm not calling him out by name. And Snyder was saying, you know, he's an al Goodell's an alcoholic. He sits on 57th Avenue and drinks all day. I'm like, Dan, I don't wanna hear that. Um, Jerry was more tactical, but Jerry Jones and Dan Snyder called me personally the night before the call and said, you gotta hammer Goodell. And I said, no. So I knew not to go make it personal. But with the same thing is when you got 40% of your spend and your franchisees are getting hurt by the controversy, you've got to say something. So my wording was, 
get this resolved now to the players and owner satisfaction. I thought that wasn't political. I thought that wasn't taking sides. It was just get your act together. You're the leader. Leader's job is to solve problems, solve the problem. So I sort of knew, but not to the extent that I didn't realize they could twist owners and players' satisfaction into snotters against kneeling. That's just not, that's not what I said. That's just not truth, truthful. That, that is not what you said. So Dan Snyder <laughs> has been pushed out of the NFL. And, and I'm sure he's got a story to tell. He's, maybe he's not going to ever tell it. But do you think that is a byproduct of his feud with Roger Goodell, perhaps more so than all the different allegations that have been leveled against him? What's the saying? The hardest person in the world not to screw is yourself. <laughs> I think Snyder's probably the pers poster boy for that saying. I mean, of course, the fact that he hates Goodell and he gave Goodell a hard way to go. There's no doubt that Goodell turned his guns on Dan Snyder. But, uh, you know, I like Dan, but most of Dan's injuries are self-inflicted. I mean, you know, he, everywhere he goes, <laughs> it's usually takes the fun out of the deal. And again, I like the guy, but I mean, he's, he's just a difficult guy to deal with. Hmm. Why do you think Jerry Jones has been able to survive just because he, he's, so he's just, he's smart. He's a smart guy. I mean, Jerry Jones is the best businessman I've probably ever met. I mean, he didn't make his money off, you know, tech or coming up with something. I mean, that guy, you know, whether it's apartments or football teams or um, oil. I mean, he's just really Papa John's. I mean, we're making 10 million a year down in Dallas, but, and he was a wonderful partner. And he and his wife, uh, Jean and Charlotte and Junior, um, they just, the whole family treated me like royalty. But Jerry Jones is the best businessman I've ever met. And he was a great partner. And we had a lot of fun, I, you know, every, every game I'd take them a million dollars because our, our franchise was just making so much money. and. You know, here's a guy that's worth seven, eight, ten billion dollars, whatever he's worth, and he would get the biggest kick out of that million dollars. But he's uh, he's a he's a cool guy. So hold on, you just give him a million dollars as a gift? No, he just we are he owned half of the we had oh. 110, 120 stores, and they're throwing off ten million a year. He gets half, and I get half. So every every you know six months, we're splitting up five million. I take him a million dollar check or two million dollars down to a game. He would. It, I don't know if I should tell the story, but I'll tell it anyway. He, um, I would give him the check and say, here's a million dollars. I love our partnership. And you, when you came in the deal, we were losing money in Dallas, and now we're making 10 million a year. And he always said, John, you got to learn to say it slow. Don't say a million dollars. You got to say one million. <laughs> he would drag it out and go, you're crazy. You're crazy. He figured out how to say one million dollars over two minutes. So, but he just, uh, he's a fun guy. Do you think the NFL would like to push Jerry out, but his franchise is just too historic or he's just too crafty? Jerry listens to the daughter, Charlotte. Um, and I, somebody's reining Jerry in because Jerry, Jerry's his own man, but I don't think he's, he wasn't, I mean, what has Goodell done since then that he'd be happy with? So I don't think he's happy with Goodell. I think that Charlotte's kind of said, you want, you know, you want to happen to you what happened to John and Dan and whoever else Goodell's, you know, targeted. So I think, um, I think Goodell and Jerry, there's no love loss there. I think Goodell would love to get rid of Jerry. I think Jerry would love to get rid of Goodell. I think they're probably just both a little scared of each other. I'm, I'm surmising. I'm yep. guessing. I'm throwing darts. Do you think that the NFL will ever pivot away from the wokeness and the leftism and the Marxism that they've embraced? You look at the Roman Empire, um, you know, it finally went to, you know, hell in a handbasket when you had uh, a lack of morals and uh, you had the Colosseums, which, you know, they did some pretty grotesque things. Um, you know, the NFL just seems to be unfazable in anything they do, which is pretty amazing. That brand, I mean, they're, they're, the 100 shows are like top 75. Um, they've handled controversy after controversy. Um, and, you know, the players get hurt. You know, NFL player, I think the average lifespan for an NFL player is 54. Really? 54 is average. You know, the average lifespan is, what, 77 for the rest of 
uh, the country. So it's a uh, it's just had a lot of negativity, um, but it doesn't seem to hurt the ratings. People seem to love to watch the sport. So as long as they got the dollars, um, I think they're going to be able to get away with a lot of things that the rest of uh, the rest of other businesses, other sports can't get along, get away with. I don't know. But I will say this, once it starts to cave, it'll cave all the way in. But I don't see any signs anytime soon of it, of it caving in. Yeah, what you described, too big to fail. Because the whole television ecosystem feeds off of the NFL. Mm-hmm. And if the NFL collapses, I think the whole, just all the garbage they're spewing on TV, the whole thing collapses without the NFL. Uh, man, I, I, I just, just as a fan, you and I have lived long enough to see like real NFL football. And the way they keep just softening the game, it, it, it's, it's, to me, it's almost like your complaints about like, Papa John's, hey, you can't cheat the ingredients. That's going to hurt the overall product. And they keep messing with the ingredients of football and, and keep telling us, oh, this is what you watched in 1978. And I'm saying, no, this isn't what I watched in 1978. This when OJ ran for two thousand yards in seventy three, it looked com- it was completely different from this. Yeah, and eventually I think that's that's got to hurt the business at some point. People people are going to keep falling for uh, less, but worse ingredients. <laughs> are we? Or I just um, when you don't a man that gets himself in trouble but has principles will get himself out of trouble pretty quickly. A man that's having success but doesn't have principles and values, um, once he gets himself in trouble, there's no... So I don't see a lot of integrity and dignity, mutual respect out of the NFL. So to me, that that moral model sooner or later will fall apart. But it sure doesn't look like from a financial perspective that's going to be anytime soon. You know, I, I got away from the NFL. You know, they said that, by the way, they, they lied. They said the NFL um, got rid of us. I fired Goodell. I got rid of them. That's, 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 that's on the record. But the media spins that. But we, we, the NFL was playing dirty. Roger Goodell's a dirty guy. He's a coward. I just don't want to be associated with it. So I, I said, get, I don't care how powerful they are. I don't want to be in business with them. That was my call, not their call. For Papa John to walk away from the NFL, just that's you, not them. That's that's going to be on the record that I told them to go hit the road, go pound sand. You guys are unethical. You're immoral. You lack principles, and you know you're you're a bunch of frauds. Making sure you have fruits and vegetables in your diet is important for maintaining a healthy diet, but it can also be difficult if you're busy. The average person doesn't even eat half the recommended servings in a day. That's a huge gap in nutrition. And inflation has seriously increased the cost of fruits and vegetables. That's why Balance of Nature Products provides an on-the-go solution. And they haven't raised their prices for 10 years. Their proprietary blend of 31 fruits and vegetables comes in easy-to-swallow capsules and will give your body so much of the nourishment it needs. Imagine trying to eat 31 different kinds of produce in a single day. Well, that's what you're getting with Balance of Nature Fruits and Vegetables. When you go to balanceofnature.com, you'll get 35% off plus $10 off any additional sets with your first order as a preferred customer by using my discount code FEARLESS. That's limited to five sets, but you'll save a ton of money while getting the fruits and vegetables you need in your diet. Go to balanceofnature.com and use the promo code FEARLESS for 35% off. That's balanceofnature.com. Join me, my friends, my mother in particular, she just sent me a note. Got my balance of nature, baby. You get yours too. Is there anybody uh, who, again, you talked about being sold out by people that you loved, but maybe there were people that weren't a part of your life who stepped up oh, and yeah. loved you and supported you in a way that, that where you really find out who your friends are. This is amazing. Um, the black community. Um, ben Carson. Um, Sam Tolbert. Uh, Reverend Elliot. Reverend Cosby. All the black leaders in Louisville. I mean, Ben Carson and I, he, we're partners. 
and American Institute. You know, I mean, I make all these board of directors tens of millions of dollars. <clears throat> you know, something gets misconstrued and misquoted in what I said, and they completely throw me over the ship with an anchor around my uh, ankle to hoping I'm going to drown. Ben Carson, he partners with me. Kevin Cosby parties with me. Reverend Elliott, he talks about my, my dad and my grandfather. I mean, Tolbert, the head of the uh, National Convention of Baptist uh, Churches. I mean, he's been a partner. I have been blown away, you know, this, this, this deal we're doing with laundry service. All the money, you know, we're suing for like 240 million bucks. All the money goes to charity. Um, and the Whitlock Foundation, I, 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 well, I love it. You don't think Elliot and Cosby and Carl, <laughs> you don't think they're going to get a new church out of this? Um, but that would be a beautiful day. Uh, the mock juries we've done, we win every mock jury. And the beautiful thing is they stick with the four corners of the contract. What, what does the contract say on hurting this guy? But we win on all three mock juries, of eight, and they think I get the 240 million. If they knew the charity got the 240 million, we'd kill these guys. So we're looking forward to our day in court. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Do you ever think, is it a possibility, as we talked earlier about where Papa John's stock is and where the business is, is there a chance that they put the Papa back in Papa John's? Is that something you would like? Would you like to be back in the dry captain's chair? Um, I think you got to be real, real about how bad a shape it's in. Um, I don't, they may be able to sort of fix it without me. I'm not too sure. I don't think it'll ever be back to greatness unless they, they make good on what they did and that we get this behind us. I, I don't know how you have a board of directors and a group of executives that look, paint the founder as a racist whose name's on the door, that until that's resolved, until you get that conflict resolved, you're, 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 just, you're just not gonna be a great company. Now, if I went back in, man, you're talking, you know, Elon Musk, when he, if you read the book, he does surges, you know, uh, whether it's his rocket company, building a, a smaller, more powerful rocket or assembly line the last minute at uh, Tesla. He's a surge guy. This is going to require a, a year-long surge. And, you know, whether we could make improvements, we could get a hell of a lot better, but they've destroyed the balance sheet. They've destroyed the culture. They've lost all their good people. The product's not as where it was, should, be, should be. The service is and the stores are run down. This is a, a monumental task. Why? Because there's 6,000 stores. There's 100,000 employees. You've got to change the habits of 100,000 people. It's hard to change your habits and my habits. I mean, to get people to go back to uh, a passion for what they're doing, a, a passion for making the pizza right, a passion for keeping the store clean. That is, you know, it's 20 days to form a habit, 40 days to really solidify it in. And right now, the thing is so far in left field that I think it'd be difficult, if not impossible, even for me. Difficult, but you've done it before in Re terms of yeah, yeah. rebounding the company. It's not not this far gone. That's why when I was kind of raising cane with the franchisees in 20 and 21, I said, hey, stop. You don't do this. You guys are going to get yourself behind the eight ball here and it's not going to be fixable. 2021, it was fixable with six, eight months could have fixed it. I mean, right now where it's at is a whole uh, different level of difficulty. Do you think there's anybody on the board that is thinking like, hey, the silver bullet is to is to put the Papa back in Papa John? I don't know. I never really I haven't really kept up with it. Um, I know that the that um, some of the ex employees that were really, really good are getting calls. Um, I think they've got to be contemplating it, but they're probably, you know, remember these people are not real strong, I don't think, as far as, you know, the, the lumps they're going to have to take to say, hey, you know, laundry, laundry service gave us a bad tape. We didn't understand the full context of what happened. This is wrong to our founder. We're sorry. I don't, I just not sure the board's up to really going through that. I think they'll take the easy way out and just hire another spokesperson. That'd be my gut. What do you think about, and not to, 
But let's just talk. What do, you, what do you think about the move of trying to make Shaq the face of Papa John's Pizza? I think, it's a, I think of all the things, that was the most racist. They're going to use a black guy to cover up what they did to a, a, a white guy? That's racist. <laughs> now that's racist. And they did it right in front of America. You know, they, he was just a shield to cover up their infidelities and what they did to me. <laughs> it, I think you're a thousand percent <laughs> accurate. It, it didn't. Shaq is left. Oh, nobody's there. No, I mean, by the way, here's your litmus test. Jeff Smith who came in and, and kind of was behind the scenes um, way before he became on the scenes. with um, And that's a long story in itself. Uh, but I do want to get a point in on uh, this uh, extortion and blackmail, because I get, I get extorted and blackmailed quite a bit. But um, the um, which one you want to handle? For? What was the question you asked? What's... The question was about, we were talking about oh, Shaq and... No. Him, and we, okay, Jeff Smith and got off, and Livy Curley got off at 82, 84 bucks a share, March the 4th of last year, okay? There's your number. Who is Jeff Smith? Jeff Smith was the owner of Starboard, who was in charge of the takeover of Papa John's to oust me. Um, if you gotcha. own a company, and Jeff Smith... Jeff Smith and Rob Lynch are the, the kingpins, Lynch, are the two kingpins that destroyed Papa John's. Now, the board went along with them, but nobody is left at Papa John's from when, I, when we, we left. Nobody. So Lynch is gone. Shapiro's gone. Smith is gone. Kirtley's gone. All the executives, Muldoon, O'Hearn. So they, there's nobody there that was there when I was there, A, and B is all the institutional knowledge. There's nobody in that company that understands the pizza business, which is, is extremely dangerous. Um, but the, one of the, the key points of the laundry service was um, Casey Washington with laundry service called Richie and said, we're gonna get into extortion here a little bit. He said, if you don't give us $6 million, we're gonna bury the founder. Now, that's what, he, that's what Richie came to the office and said. That's what he did. Richie and who who made this? Yeah. Casey, Casey Washman? Washman called Richie and said, "If you don't give me six million dollars, I'm going to bury the founder." Richie gave him office. I said, "This is extortion." You know, you need to call. And by the way, I called the FBI. The, we've met with the FBI three times, try to get this, you know, get this uh, filed and get an extortion case. They're waiting for the outcome of the, the case up in Louisville. Richie gets under oath, and this is why I know Richie's part of it. He says, "Well, I know he was belligerent and vulgar, but I I don't remember." That's what he said. Now, if somebody's going to take $6 million from the founder, you're going to remember that. <clears throat> Just two weeks ago, remember this is four and a half years in, we found out from Christy Johnson, from Kiss Christy Renewal, but I'm not saying it right, that <clears throat> uh, Jennifer Harris and Shane Hutchinson of the food division were there when Richie said, hey, by the way, laundry service is trying to extort $6 million out of John. So Richie knows he told Sean. Sean knows he told Jennifer. Jennifer knows he told Christy. It's just one more piece of evidence, Jason. They're all lying. I mean, they know what he said. They know what Washman said. Furthermore, laundry service to this day is trying to blackmail us, going, the merits of the case, um, you know, we don't have any merits for what we did because we're guilty, but we're going to attack John personally. You know, we're going to say he was partying too much or had a bad marriage. I don't know what they're going to say and don't care. But I'm no longer the spokesperson. <clears throat> you know, I'm not, I'm no longer, um, you know, I don't, I mean, when you're the spokesperson and you have any kind of accusation and it's sort of plausible, you got a problem. Now, if it's totally false and you can prove that, you fight it to the end. If you're guilty, you say you're sorry and you, you know, you, you take your licks. But there's a fine middle line there where it's like, you know, you kind of got to hold your nose because, Somebody said something or did something or whatever. And so the nice thing about not being that spokesperson and not working on the eggshells is when I get these threats, I can kind of say, go pound sand. So that is, I have, I got my freedom back is what I'm trying to explain. The, the, the point I was getting at, that people are jumping ship because they know that, hey, we can't fix this. Finger of blame is going to be pointed at us. Possibly with Shaq, it's like, well, I got all the money out of this I can. Let me move on. And 
not when when and that again, or I, I think we are reaching a level of failure and desperation that they will have no choice but to make peace with you and bring you back if they actually want the business to survive and these 100,000 employees, if they actually wanna do what's best for them, it would be to take the lumps, bring you back, there'll be some initial blowback or whatever, Yeah, yeah. but they gotta be mature enough and, and, and ready to uh, deal with that blowback <laughs> to do what's best for the people, the drivers, the pizza makers, <laughs> uh, all these hundred thousand employees. Oh, it definitely it'd be just to put this behind and have the founder back. You know where he's, you know, he's really pro Papa John's because I got a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. I don't, you know, hell any animosity, but it was a pretty dirty thing to do. I think that would be really good for the brand and the franchisees, whatever little or, or a lot of involvement I had with the company. I'm not going to hold my breath <laughs> because, I mean, you know, you really, you got to, to do that, they got to man up and, and admit some things that I just don't sure, sure they have enough integrity or solid self to do. But, you know, they're in trouble. It's going to get worse. There's no good news going to come out of that company for the next 12 months. None. And you take two or three of the best guys I know that I would bring back in with me and you put them in there, they're going to they're gonna have a tough time. It's, it's a big job, Jason. It's a huge job to fix that. I mean, you're 6,000 stores in 50 countries with 100,000 employees. It's a tough gig to fix. It's fixable, but you really got to know what you're doing and you got to make quick decisions and you got to, you know, you got to do intuitive things like the food service. They're making the margins higher you know, so they can make their Wall Street number. The first thing you got to do is take that food service down to zero and get that store level economics healthy. They go, well, is that going to take 10 months? Is that going to take 10 weeks? I don't know. Don't care. But until that store and that franchisee make money, you're just, you know, you're just rearranging chairs on the Titanic. So I came up with this analogy uh, beforehand, and I, I want to throw it out here. We may end on this note or this conversation. But it seems like the environment has changed. The culture has changed a bit since 2018. And I look at someone, and this will be an odd analogy until you really think about it for some of the people in the audience. But it's like I look at Dave Portnoy yeah. and Barstool Sports, and that's his version of KFC and Papa John's Pizza. He's the face of the brand, and he's a polarizing figure. They've tried to cancel him. Can't say that I agree with everything Dave Portnoy has done and or stands for, but I love the way he fights. Yeah. And he stands his ground, and it's work for him. And I'm wondering, have you thought about like what Dave has done and just how aggressive he's been in defending himself, and he survived? Yeah. I think, you know... Jimmy V, never give up, fight like hell, yeah. Um, the the problem being a conservative that you know has um, some clout and some notoriety is when you you do stick your neck out, you're going to get you're going to get shot, you're going to get hurt. They they just the the mainstream media they control the message, the narrative. They they hurt you, or they try to hurt you. So you've got to be bulletproof with your your principles, your values, and what you stand for. Um, the the same time our country's going to hell in a handbasket. I mean the the nucleus of the family alone, the communities, the thirty four billion trillion excuse me in debt, Afghanistan, the border. I mean the rapes and murders and trafficking that's going on every single day at our border just drives me nuts. I mean it just makes me so upset. But you can't sit back and do nothing. So you've got to pick pick your fights and um, point knowing. I don't know if it's because he controls some media or does something, but he's A, he's got the fight. B, he was proactive. Uh, C, he's got the right people around him. And, and D is I think he's got some media push that he can get some things out that, that I couldn't. Papa, I appreciate the conversation. I, I think the audience will, and uh, I think you're uncancelable. <laughs> uh, I think they tried to cancel you, but they're actually canceling Papa John's Pizza. And at some point, they got to snap out of it. 
and do it. You know, the the left loves to talk about how they're for the little people. Yeah. And I just never see proof of it. No. I I mean, the the people that make this country great, Jason, are the people that wake up every day and do what they do to make this country great. And you got to protect them. That's the middle class, the upper and the lower and the middle class. That's what makes America, America. And my guys, when you print money and you waste money and and you have all these rules and regulations, you hurt that middle class and you get a two-tiered society. And that is a loser for all of us. So, you know, you just got to fight like hell. and, 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 And to your point, the little guy really is the big guy because if the little guy is not successful, then the rest of us, you know, we're not gonna we're not gonna do too well as our, our, ourselves. All right, uh, enough about Dave Portnoy. I've, I've, we've given him enough credit on this show. Just kidding. Uh, but I did, Papa, want to end on a bit more of a personal mm-hmm. note. Right. You're getting married again, yes? Well, not exactly. That's what I was bringing up when um, this extortion thing with. Um, uh, Steve Ritchie, where Washington said, if you don't pay us $6 million, we're going to bury the founder. That extortionary thing came up. And then we're doing the, um, you know, the mediation. And laundry service again said, you know, if you don't settle this, we're going we're gonna to extort money. And then the girl I was engaged to said, if you don't give me $300,000, I'm going to testify for Washington. So it was like, you know, you kind of go, what's it like to be John Snodder? It's like, you know, you just, you kind of laugh, you kind of cry, and you kind of just kind of, you get in a state of shock. But there's nothing anybody can do anymore to really just kind of take me off my game. You were engaged, <laughs> and she, at the last minute, she tries <laughs> to extort you? Yes. I mean, it's 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 on a, you know it's even it's in writing and tape. If you don't give me three hundred thousand, I want to be the star witness for laundry service. So it's better that we didn't get. Anyway, to answer your question. I'm not getting married. <laughs> <laughs> no, that does not sound like someone that uh, would would get back up on that horse. Uh, <laughs> wow. Oh, so yeah, I heard. I heard that little birdie or that little rumor kind of backwards, uh, but I certainly get it, man. Oh man! But see, you're you're looking at it as that's kind of hurtful, which it is. I'm looking at it. What a gift from God to find out now. I mean, you marry somebody that's capable of doing something like that. You know, A is you got to go. Why were you attracted to her in the first place? And B is, oh my gosh. Pick a number, $2 million, $20 million, $200 million mistake. So, I mean, how lucky am I to find that out this early on? It, it, it's, it's great that you found that out, but it does speak to the difficulties <laughs> of being wealthy and famous. How, how do you give, I'm sure there's a lot of people in our <laughs> audience that want to be wealthy and famous, and so maybe some of them will be wealthy and famous, or maybe some of them are wealthy and famous. What do you get, what advice would you give them about dating? Well, you, you go inside, you go, okay, see, I'm I attract seductive, narcissistic, gold digging psychopaths. So if you're out there and you're a, a <laughs> seductive, seductive, narcissistic, gold digging psychopath, you're gonna like me because see, I, I think I can fix at everybody. Papa <laughs> at papajohn.com, email. But, but see, I, they know that I think I can fix them. And I think I can fix them, but you can't really fix anybody. You got to fix yourself. You got to, you know, and, and you know, about John, like, I really don't want to change John because where I'm at is because who I am. I want to refine John. I want to be a better person. I want to make humanity better. I want to enhance. I want to embellish. I want to embrace, but I really don't want to change. Um, but, you know, I have this personality where I think I can fix everybody and solve the world's problems. And that, that kind of, attracts that kind of person so you got to go always remember when you have a problem you always go inward what am i am i playing it straight am i playing games am i being truthful am i getting 100 percent? and if you can answer that honestly that you're not the problem then go outward you know so let, let me ask you a real <laughs> question this is a real question uh having because i can't remember what you me and papa john we went to the deontay wilder tyson fury fight and may have been the first yeah. one and so I got to ask this question because your date was beautiful. Okay. Do you choose with your eyes? Is that is that the issue? 
Well, the first five or ten minutes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, they, you 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 kind of go, are they are they attractive? Take care of themselves. Are they fit because that 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 indicates discipline and self respect. But that last, I mean, you, I go right. I mean, to the personality. And so we asked about this uh, this fiance that's trying to extort money out of me. What's what did I learn out of that? Um, I learned that <clears throat> it's all about energy. And energy is all about frequency, and frequency is all about goodness. And you know, I have—I don't need anybody to change, um, you know, uh, the the lawnmower blade or clean the clothes or um, do the laundry. I don't need anything. Um, all I need them to do is enhance, embrace, embellish. What I already have. What do I mean by that? If you come in my house, my dog's a loving dog. My friends are loving. My kids, my grandkids are, I mean, it's got energy, man. It's got energy. You can feel it. So what's been amazing is like, this is simple. Don't screw this up. And I think society's been so hard on people that a harmonious kindness, thoughtfulness is so uncomfortable. They're addicted to anxious. They're addicted to um, you know, uh, not being harmonious, something's going on where I haven't been able to find somebody that just embrace the energy that's already there, embellish it, enhance it, and you'll uh, do fine. But I've gone from, you know, you pick the 34 attributes, then you mo move that down to six, and then four, two, it's real simple. It's all about energy. And energy is all about love. The higher the love, the higher the joy, the higher the kindness, the closer you are to God. I mean, God is a straight line. That's how, you know, that's the energy I'm looking for. I'm, I'm going to make this sacrifice, and uh, it it's just speaks to what type of person I am, really. <laughs> that uh, if, if your dates are anything like what you uh, brought to uh, the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight, I'm going to volunteer to interview them first <laughs> and to do the scouting for you first before introducing them to you. I'm willing to make that sacrifice just for you, John. Well, I want you to interview them and you got to give them a physical. I, <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> just Thank for you. you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Jason. Thank God, you. Bless. God bless. God bless you. Uh, that means uh, we'll play some tomorrow <laughs> and we'll see you next week.